Hey, Kevin's back. He didn't, hey. he didn't die. He's still on the channel. So we are looking at his 9350 Steiger today. Yeah, we've been fighting uh, harsh shifting for the last couple of seasons. Uh, it's at the point now where it's cold, you have to shut the tractor off, put it in gear, and then start it and go again. So we've got the corn off a decent time. It's snowing outside. So we're going to pull tranny out this winter and see if we can fix this problem. Awesome. There we go. All right, so I've had trouble with this tractor for the last couple of seasons, hard shifting, and it's plugging the transmission filter. I'm changing the transmission filter at least twice a year, but so that is not normal, because I don't put a lot of hours on. I maybe put 150 hours a year in this thing. So something obviously is going wrong. So I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna check the clutch pressure. So I put a gauge on the clutch pressure and it's all up to par. I dumped the oil out, and when I did that, I, I found pieces, and finding pieces is, is never good. These look like detents or something out of a synchronizer. Not sure exactly where they came from. You're missing a spring. The spring is gone, the one <laughs> spring from the one. That spring is still in there. <laughs> so it's gonna be a bit of a exploratory surgery when we get in there. So obviously we know it's not like a seized up shifter cable or something, there's something very bad going on in there and it's gonna not get any better. So we're gonna fix it. So they built these things, I think 96 to 99 in that era. I was fortunate to get one with that Cummins M11 engine in it because the M10s were bad and their fix was get it out and put an M11 in it. This one is the bare bones, cheapest one you can get. Standard transmission in it, it's got no PTO, it's got no hitch. If I would have maybe spent a few more dollars, I could have found one with a power shift and we wouldn't be doing this. So power shifts are easier to fix than the standard transmission? I don't think the power shifts are easier to fix. They're a lot easier to get parts for and there's tons of guys that got rebuilt ones sitting on the shelf to swap you out. But to do a, like to find just a, okay, well, I'll just rip this out, put a power shift in. Guys are like, well, then you gotta find a tractor cab that came off a of power shift because all the electrical stuff to run the power shifts in the cab. So you just can't go and say, okay, we're gonna throw this out and throw power shift in because it's not gonna work. So if we found a old scrap tractor that was a power shift that had the cab on, then we could swap it which would make an awesome video. And I have a lot better tractor, but I haven't found anything like that yet, so. Yeah, and you've been, you've been looking for a year and a half? Yeah, I've been looking for a year and a half. The best I could find was an old standard transmission that came out of a burnt tractor, but it didn't quite pan out. So now we're gonna uh, pull a tranny out. Uh, the way they say to do it via the, the book is to drop it out through the bottom. So you take, put a floor, a hole, put, take the floor out of the cab so you can hook onto it, you unhook everything, and then you dig a hole underneath or whatever, and then you drop it down. But that just sounds like a lot of goofing around and standing on my head. So we're just gonna pull the cab off because that seems easier. We got Phil's nice extender boom. Yeah, and we got a good forklift now. Yeah. Right, we got a good forklift now. This is kind of why we got that thing, so we can do this stuff. <laughs> so normally when we pull the cab off, Take the, uh, well, normally if you, Rich pulls the cab off, he grabs the torches and the center bowl again and away we go. But we want to keep this cab. So normally what, I would take the compressor and the condenser off and stick it in the cab and go with it so you don't have to unhook the AC. But with this tractor, all the HVAC is right on the front there. So I'm hoping that might just be just as easy just to unbolt that off the cab and leave the condenser and everything uh, here. And this is an older tractor, so we have all cables to unhook. It's not like the new ones where you just take the brake lines off and pull the electrical plugs and away you go. We've got throttle cables and remote cables and shift cables and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So. How many hours on this thing? <sighs> I think almost 4,000, so it's not... It's not that bad. Oh, oh. 44. 144, it's all fours, all the way across, look at that, eh? The tires are all good, so. Well, we just put tires on a couple years ago. That was a, a cheap endeavor as well. It's a good running tractor, it's a good strong tractor. It pulls great, like the clutch is not slipping. Just can't get it into gear. So. And it's the third gear that? It's one, two, three, four. Like the ranges, like you're supposed to put it in range first, then shift your one, two, three, four, and it is synchro, but going down the road, I've always double clutched it just because it just shifts easier. Yep. But now it's to the point where like standing still, you just cannot get it in. If it's good and hot, it's better. But when it's cold, it's brutal. So there's a port down in here. You take a plug out, you screw a gauge in and you can check your pressure. I had a gauge and I put like 
10 feet of line on it so I could get it in the cab. Once we get the cab off, then we can and point what, it out. What are you checking there? You're checking, so it's a, it's a wet clutch in there, right? Like it's not like a dry clutch, it's a wet clutch. You're, you're checking the pressure on the clutch. Make sure A, it comes off and you push your clutch pedal down. Okay. And B, it's up to the spec when the clutch pedal's in, right? Okay. Low pressure equals slipping clutch. And if you push your clutch pedal in and there's still pressure on there, then that could be a hard shift issue, right? Because it's still, it's not disengaging. Okay. But if the clutch plates in there are a little bit warped, which is possible once we get apart, then they'll be dragging as well. We'll show you where that is, a little dark right now, and it's kind of buried, but once the cab is off, it's just four of those bolts. And yeah, four bolts to start pulling. Yeah. <laughs> Bolt cutters cut everything else off, right? <laughs> So the uh, HVAC unit actually comes off real easy. It's just four bolts and uh, one wiring harness. And then you gotta take this cover off to get the temperature probe out of the condenser. Other than that, it just comes right off. So that was definitely the way to deal with that. So this is going much better than I first thought it would. HVAC unit was simple to come off. Steering motor, which I was just gonna take all the lines off of, but four bolts and it just plunks off. So that can stay there. And then I just took the clutch cable off the pedal because I wasn't really too excited about climbing down. So that's it for this side. Now it's just a matter of Disconnecting some electrical over here, some shift cables coming down. If we unhook those off the transmission or up in the cab, that is yet to be decided. And then behind here, we have the remote valves, and that's just four cables, which is quite easy to disassemble. And then, like Rich said, four bolts and off it comes. All right, so we got off the remotes. Yeah, they're actually bolted to the bottom of the cab. All the wires are unhooked, but for some strange reason, the two wires that go to the locking differentials, there's no plugs. They have to go all the way underneath the front and back diff and unplug them. And then we could get them unhooked. All right, so the shift cables were a lot easier to disconnect than I thought they would be. You just gotta crawl around underneath a little bit. And there is these fancy little things under the U-bolts that you gotta watch out for. This line here, as far as I can tell, is for the engine oil pressure, which goes here. I don't know why anyone would build one with a hose going for the oil pressure sensor, like they've been running electric gauges for, it seems like ever. But anyways, that's just a little bit, one more line we gotta take off. So that off and the park brake, and we should be ready to go. That is for the oil pressure. On the engine or? On the engine. Interesting, with no, it's just a hose. Yeah, but it's the 90s. Why wouldn't you run a wire in a temperature sender, yeah. right? Like, yeah, that, I don't get it. So, so that has the potential to leak somewhere under the cab where you don't see it and run your entire engine out of it. Yeah? And that, like, that's what happened to the one engine that I rebuilt because yeah. the oil pressure sensor leaked and you weren't paying attention and ran it out of oil. So well, that's even sure, just pretty sure where that line is going. If you don't put that exactly back and it rubs through because you didn't tie it down or whatever, that that, that could lead to problems. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's yeah, engine oil in there. So that's engine oil. Interesting. Yeah, no, I was blown away. I'm like, yeah, you know, when we worked in tractors built in the 50s, that's what you had, but. <laughs> yeah. Parking brake cable is going to get unhooked. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun underneath there. It just, it's a just a pin and then of course the little nut for the cable, but it's like, <clears throat> to pull it, there's these little plugs that you can pull out and underneath there, there's a five eighths nut. But when I go to put a bolt in, it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> <laughs> so you say, oh, just round the hole out. But then when you go back together, it's gonna leak water in there. So the proper way is you have a tool that bolts from here to there to there, the hook on top. 
and you pull them all. So I was thinking about making one, but I think we're just gonna, because you can't even get a bolt through there, is just pull this plastic top off. Yeah. Put all these little bolts all the way around, and then we'll just hop chains directly right down onto those things. And yeah, okay, we just need two loops over top of the, the bar, right? And then we're... Yeah, so whatever, we'll grab the three points and so we'll get this off and hope, like there's not gonna be any HVAC stuff underneath there because it's all there. So right. I don't know what's under there, but we're gonna find out. All right, just a bunch of dead mice and raccoons. Uh, I don't know about raccoons, but could be dead mice. Hopefully dead mice. <laughs> there's two speed nuts, I don't know if you can see Speed nuts, yeah. That you just crank off with your hand and drop that down. It's so clean. Yeah. So clean. Thanks, eh? Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. And then just, yeah. There's there's like there. no threads left on that. We could just pull right around this A frame here. Like yeah. Right around this frame here. Yeah, well that, that one will work. You but got, then it'll, it'll you got have something at the back. This one's kind of important. Well, that one. Oh, there's, there's a little bit. As long as it doesn't tip, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get the. Maybe that's happening. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> I got a half dead battery and you got a full charge uh, on? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where'd you find that battery? <laughs> <laughs> or something just in case you feel comfortable up there. How's that? Yeah, you're happy I'm happy. Going up? come out of the top why would oh, it look? yeah it looks easy enough it's even got taper plates here to, oh, yeah. to help it, help <laughs> yeah, it ride right so it doesn't catch. <laughs> it doesn't that catch. was why we couldn't get a socket on those bolts oh right. yeah, yeah just get a wrench on them so you do need a half, inch and a half wrench to grab the front yeah bolts, cab bolts so now what now this has to come out drive shaft front and back yeah take top bottom, bottom. Yeah, you can, as I know, I'll just take that pump off. Yeah, there's a, that's only a couple bolts. Clutch cable there running underneath, but yeah. Probably not too bad. How is it bolted in? Just uh, some of the bottom? Yeah, some of the bottom, then there's a... There's nothing that locks it from the... Well, yeah, there's a couple there, a oh, couple okay. on the top, top okay. and bottom. Okay. okay. This is going to be more of a stand on your head stuff. Yeah. I think we don't have anything open. I'm going to... Like, put the air compressor to it or something first. Yeah, makes sense. It's kind of hard to wash with the cabin away. Yeah. That was a good time to wash. Yeah, that was a good time to wash. It'll just run down your concrete and out the door anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, I got, I got the, uh, the absorbing floor. <laughs> is 
So that stuff does not blow off very well. But I think we can get the tranny out and then wash it. There's not gonna be that many open ports. This is the uh, main hydraulic pump. Um, we'll just unbolt it off the transmission and off to the side. These lines here, you got a couple fuel lines. The uh, one's gonna tap on it. That's your feed line, return line. A lot of times they have a check valve in there, but so it can't come back. But I'm having my doubts that is the case here, so I might just have to go real quick with a plug. And then there's a wiring harness, and then there's a couple steering lines that that all can come off. And some shafts. This pump here is the lube pump for the tranny. So we'll just take the one line off of there and cap it. And then we can get the transmission out. If we have everything kind of capped up, then maybe we can give it a power wash once it's out before we tear it apart. That is the plan. So here we go. Okay, so most everything is unhooked. We get the pump off there, wrapped up. But on this side, these, I was hoping just to take these bolts out and leave this bracket here, because that would have made life simple. But I'll show you underneath, there's one shifter that just won't clear. So you can see right there, so I could take this shifter off then you take this collar out and you push that rod inside. That's how this transmission has to come apart. But then I got another hole I gotta plug when I wash it and that's kind of a pain from under here. So I think I'm just gonna take out this bolt over here and then the one on the front and then just remove that whole angle iron and then it should clear. Now this front drive here is very tight. So I got to unbolt it off the back, off the transmission, but I think I'm gonna have to unbolt it off the front as well because then I can just take that whole thing out. So a little bit more work under here. I think we're gonna do a brake job, big heavy duty brake job or under here. Um, we'll get into that later. That's pretty, it's pretty wimpy the brakes on this big thing. So that's where we're at. And then hopefully we can pull this thing. All right, back at Kevin's. Uh, you got everything disconnected? We think so. Drive shafts are off, the hydraulic pump is off. So okay. get that nice and covered, so don't disconnect your hoses, just pop yeah. the pump off. There's a bunch of hoses that were running over here, which was the two steering lines and the fuel lines. So the one was handy, you just shut the tap off. The other one is, so if you have lots of fuel in, it's, you gotta be fast. So <laughs> sometimes the tractors, like on some of the other tractors, they got a check valve. And in little tractors, they have a check valve and return yep. line. So that when you take the line off, it doesn't flood. There's no check valve in this one. So it's you got the, the dollar fifty cologne? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's more than that now. <laughs> but the price is, <laughs> I think it was a buck seventy five. You, you can date the video by the price of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It was fast. I, I knew that was coming, so I had a I had a cap ready to go. I could just on yeah, yeah and then yeah and then there's like uh, the uh the two lines for the oil filter this is your lube pump for the transmission okay right so then it goes up to the filter which is way over there and then back i'm assuming that's just for ease of changing the filter which is pretty easy to change and then there's, yeah the drive shaft from the engine and one from each uh differential now this one it is unbolted it's really short it doesn't want to come out of there it won't collapse enough oh yeah so I'm hoping when we lift it, like I got it unbolted on the both sides. It's not big enough to collapse, but it is unhooked. So you thinking the transmission will go a bit towards the back of the yeah, tractor? Yeah, there's lots of room. Okay. And then you can see we gotta do it, we gotta do a brake job on it, I think, too, while we're here. Yeah, that's uh same, <laughs> same with the tank. We were supposed to swap the engine and the tank, and then they looked and they're like, oh, we got no brakes. <laughs> There's no kind of, pad left on it's that. It's kind of like the Mickey Mouse brake system for such a big tractor, right? Like my smaller tractors have way more brake than that. Yeah. But so you can see the pistons all the way out. And there's like there's like zero <laughs> friction material. So when the transmission's out, it'll be real easy. And then I can just sit in there and work on that. I don't have to yeah. don't have to uh, crawl underneath. So Mickey Mouse be... brake system, he says, and that's bigger than the one I just put in the tank. So. <laughs> The tank's a lot heavier. It's not gonna freewheel like this thing does going down the road. And then on this side, I thought we could just 
take these bolts out and then lift it up. Okay. And leave that bracket there. Yeah. But I can show you underneath, the one shifter won't clear. So I'm hoping that we can just pick this up and then just kick this. I think we can wiggle this uh, bracket out of there. It's just those two bolts are loose and there's only one here. Okay. And if we get that out, then we got lots of room to okay. maneuver it out. All right. Uh, did you drain the oil? Yes, oil is out. Oh yeah, that was that's some pretty nice looking stuff too. Let's see if I think it's supposed to, supposed to look like, but it's not supposed to look like that dark. So it doesn't smell burnt, but it's kind of ugh. And I cheated on the clutch cable. I didn't take that off the transmission. It's just coming out with because if you look down there, I you gotta get back just up, up there. I know. Clutch cable down there. I didn't want to stand on my head and hook it all, so I think we can sneak it out. Okay. And then this is just lifting off this five. This is just a regular five eighths course. So I got a little heavy duty rack there that we can bolt to. And on this side, I had to look all over town for half inch fine thread bolts, but I ended up having to get them in a weld port because nobody in town has them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> I had, you had one? I had one. No. Canadian, Tire had, it, it Canadian Tire had one too. <laughs> I could have done that, but anyways, those are grade eights, so they're not gonna break. No, that's good. So, uh, transmission weighs what? Two thousand pounds? Yeah, I think something like that. A little more, maybe. Yeah, like a ton. So, okay, it's heavy enough that you, you don't want it to land on your foot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Got the forklift ready to go. Phil's so. attachment there still that we've basically inherited it yeah he's like just keep it at your place because yeah. we've used that thing a dozen times in the last two months because he said when i need it i need the forklift with it so <laughs> <laughs> Swinging off the forks? Yeah. <laughs> we could drive the fork up like this, swing down the fork, chain brakes, <laughs> blows through the asphalt. It'd be great. You want to run the fork list? Five bucks if you can do it without breaking the skid. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kevin's going to pressure wash it and then bring it down to my place. So whether that's on the forklift, driving down the road, I don't know, but it's done, Bill, so we won't need anything to, uh, <laughs> out of the realm of reality. Yeah, Told with the lawnmower. <laughs> that's, that just screams DUI. If you have done this before and you know where to get parts, reasonable parts, or if you have a scrap machine, if you've got a, um, 9300 9, series stagger. With a cab and a power shift. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't be against donating that to VNR. Um, but if you've rebuilt it and you know reasonable cost for parts or you have a parts transmission or anything, definitely comment down below or send us an email at thebossgarage at gmail.com. Um, each one of the synchros in there is a couple grand. There's how many? Four. Four, so there's eight grand plus clutches and bearings and seals. You're gonna have 10 grand into this if we rebuild it as is. Machine's still worth 50, 60, so it's worth rebuilding, but 10 grand hurts when we're rebuilding. So if you. That's more cheap. Yeah, or economical. <laughs> so, all right, guys, uh, next video will be That's about conscious. three, four weeks because we got to take it apart, order the parts, and then, and then rebuild it. So, um, in the meantime, we'll keep working on the tank and the cab over. And other stuff happening on the other channel, too. So, remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go. Look at that. I'm filthy. You're allowed to be on the channel. Well, yay! <laughs>